coming up, I will show you the controls in Microsoft 365 to help drive security and compliance as your users work in Microsoft Teams. As Nidia covered in her last Essentials episode, there are of course specific security and compliance related controls to configure the core experiences within Teams, including meeting policies and org-wide settings such as guest access and more. You can implement these in the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. You can catch that episode at aka.ms slash Microsoft Teams for IT. Because Teams is part of Microsoft 365, the best approach is to consider Microsoft Teams as another endpoint in your security and compliance strategy. This is because, as we explained previously, Microsoft Teams benefits from the security and compliance foundation of SharePoint, OneDrive, and Exchange. So if you're used to the controls for these workloads, for the most part, you just need to extend these to your Teams environment. A good place to start is SecureScore, found in the Microsoft 365 Security Center. Under Improvement Actions, you will find a list of recommendations in order of importance to improve the security of your environment. Let me point out a few that are relevant to Teams. First, we know that enabling multi-factor authentication can reduce the risk of phishing attacks, including impersonation, by around 99.9%. With MFA, you can require a second form of authentication, such as a phone call or a text message from your users before they get access to Teams. Enabling multi-factor authentication is done in Azure Active Directory. You can create a custom policy or use a baseline policy to do everything in one step. When you enable this policy, all users will be required to register for Azure multi-factor authentication within 14 days. Once registered, users will be prompted for MFA only during risky sign-in attempts. This is an effective but significant change for your users. So make sure to communicate this before enabling it. You can learn more about MFA at aka.ms slash MFA. Back in SecureScore, another great recommendation is configuring safe links. This can help you protect your users from impersonation and phishing attacks from weaponized links. This can be configured across Office 365 experiences in the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center on the Threat Management Policy. Additionally, we have a capability called Safe Attachments, which, like Safe Links, is part of Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection. You will need to proactively enable this for Teams. Then, beyond threat protection, another capability that you will see recommended by SecureScore is Data Loss Prevention, or DLP. This is central to how we approach information protection across Microsoft 365, including the classification of your data for compliance. In the case of Teams, with DLP, you can scan chat messages and channel conversations to block the sharing of sensitive data. Whereas files in Teams are covered by DLP policies applied to SharePoint. From SecureScore, again, I get a direct link to enable DLP policies for Teams. When creating a new policy, you can see that Microsoft 365 includes definitions for many common sensitive information types across many different regions that are ready for you to use, including financial, medical and health, and privacy data you also have the ability to create a custom policy. Let's create a policy for financial data using the pre-built template for PCI Data Security Standard, which covers credit card numbers. I will leave the default name. Here, you can choose all workloads or pick specific ones. I will leave everything selected, including Teams. You can also choose to include or exclude certain user accounts or groups. Under policy settings, you can, for example, allow the sharing of information within your organization, but block attempts to share externally, or block internally any sharing of sensitive information. Next, you can configure DLP for instances when a large volume of sensitive information is shared at once. For example, if someone shares at least 10 credit card numbers in the same chat, an incident report can be sent. You can choose what to include in the report and who should receive it. Then I can turn on DLP right away or test it first. I will click Next, review my policy, hit Create, and I'm done. You can learn more about DLP at aka.ms slash DLP. So now let's take a look at the top compliance configurations. The first step is to understand the type of information that is in your environment. The new data classification tab in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center, which will be available soon, takes you to an overview page that shows you the volume of sensitive data across your digital estate in Microsoft 365. 
This can help you streamline the process of figuring out the types of information protection rules you need to apply with DLP. Additionally, Microsoft Teams also honors sensitivity labels created for Office files, OneDrive, and SharePoint. To learn more about information classification for these workloads, visit aka.ms slash infoclassification. However, beyond proactively using DLP and information classification to protect your data and stay compliant, we also give you the ability to reactively search for specific content and understand when it was last accessed and by whom, for regulatory and legal reasons. Content search in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center helps you search for Microsoft Teams data. Start by creating a new search. I already created one. As you can see here, you can scope the search based on keywords and conditions, such as sender, date, and more. Once you click Save and Run, it will take a moment to return the results. I already have done this in advance. The search will find all content that meets the criteria. If you need to, you can use additional capabilities like in-place hold to prevent the tampering of content important to a legal investigation. From the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center, you can set up eDiscovery capabilities. You can do this in core eDiscovery, but I will show it in advanced eDiscovery. The first thing you will need to do is creating a case. I already have one here. You can apply eDiscovery to files, meetings, calls, and messages, including Skype for Business interrupt chats, by searching. You create your search criteria in the same way that I showed you before. I have my search already defined for a confidential project X1050. And you can see here, it has discovered all related content. And I can place this on legal hold by walking through the same steps for content search that we discussed a moment ago, including selecting specific locations, such as mailboxes and sites. In private channels, messages are stored differently. Records for messages sent in a private channel are delivered to the mailbox of all private channel members instead to the group mailbox. And because each private channel has its own SharePoint site collection that's separate from the parent team site, files in a private channel are managed independently of the parent team in its separate site collection. For e-discovery of private channels, you will need to include the user mailbox and the SharePoint site of the private channel. For more information about e-discovery, please go to aka.ms slash m365 e-discovery. Of course, beyond keeping your data for legal reasons, you also need to be able to set the right retention policies to reduce your compliance risk. Teams chats are persistent and retained forever by default. You can create retention policies in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center. Under Policies, select Retention. Here, you can click New Retention Policy. You can add a name and a description. And as an admin, you can set up two types of policies, preservation, which allow you to retain data for a given period of time, even if a user deletes the information from Teams. And deletion. This type of policy ensures that data is not a liability for your organization. After a specific duration, data is deleted from all relevant storage in Teams. Next, I need to select the specific location for my retention policy. In this case, I only want to apply this policy to Teams chat, so I deselected the rest of the options. As you can see here, you can create different retention policies for channel messages and Teams chats. Policies can be applied to specific users or teams or to everyone. With the last option, you have the ability to exclude specific teams or users. Finally, let's talk about how to manage and monitor the flow of communication in your organization. There are two capabilities that can help you with this, information barriers and communications compliance. Information barriers help you avoid conflicts of interest such as insider trading within your organization by limiting which individuals can communicate and collaborate with each other in Microsoft Teams. You can create information barrier policies using PowerShell. Here, we first create user segments or dynamic filters, and then we configure information barrier policies. In this case, I'm blocking communications between these two segments. You can create block policies to prevent one group from communicating with another group, or allow policies allowing a group to communicate with only certain other specific groups. Then, you will need to set your policies to active. This can be done individually using the identity GUID for each policy. This list is generated using the Get Information Barrier Policy commandlet. And finally, you enable them using the Start Information Barrier Policy application commandlet.
You can learn more about information barriers at aka.ms slash information barriers. Next, communication compliance in Microsoft 365 helps you minimize communication risks by helping you detect, capture, and take remediation actions for inappropriate messages in your organization. We have an upcoming demo bench in Microsoft Mechanics that will go through the step-by-step -step guidance for this capability. So that was a closer look at how you can leverage Microsoft 365 admin controls to ensure that Microsoft Teams is another endpoint in your security and compliance strategy. Please keep checking back on Microsoft Teams for IT for more guidance on deploying and managing Teams for your organization, including how to upgrade to Teams from Skype for Business and onboarding your users to Microsoft Teams. Thanks for watching.